Welcome back to Dyson with Death. The bells are ringing. The town is getting to arms as you run outside and see many worried people standing about, including a very familiar quadrant of halflings uh, near the giant's head that you've dragged into town. <clears throat> uh, I suppose we make our way to the wall, right? Isn't that where most dwarves seem to be heading? There are a lot of people moving around. The soldiers. Um, yeah, so what is your uh, intention? Are you going to man the walls and fight uh, the oncoming storm? I want to get a look, right? I just walk, I hear the bells, I run out. I, uh, that, I grabbed one of the soldiers and I said, what's what's going on? And he was like, Cyclops. And so I think I, you know, gather my things and head towards the wall to get right. a look for myself, right? Sure, um, as you come around <laughs> the corner and begin to head towards the wall, uh, you see a cyclops climbing over the wall. Okay, then. Are there dwarves fighting it? Like, what's the... You can see, like, little bolts and arrows and uh, a ballista starting to be rolled through the streets that are heading towards the, the cyclops. It definitely looks like there is a battle. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, you know, pretty far through town. Um, That's probably enough. I, do I see other Cyclops scaling the wall in other parts? You look around and you see at least three Cyclops, but you know, there are buildings in the way and you can't see everything, but there's at least three scaling the walls. Hmm. Divination spell might be nice right about now. I guess, so how far, how far am I from the walls? How big is town? The town is maybe um, a mile and a half deep and maybe like two miles wide. Okay. And how, how far am I from the walls here at the, here near the keep? You're, I want to say like a half mile from the wall. Um, mm. yeah. So it's a ways you could get there. It would take you like 10 minutes to get there. So I, that doesn't, it doesn't make sense for me to try and like leap into battle. I think I just, I step out. I start heading towards the walls and I see this and mm -hmm. I stand awestruck for probably a few minutes just sort of watching uh, watching in horror. Yeah. And I guess I'll yeah, probably wait a few minutes and see how this starts to play out. Uh, well, lots of dwarves are running towards the walls. Uh, it looks like a pitched battle for the city is beginning uh, when one of the commanders that you had been in the meeting with comes up behind you and puts a hand on your shoulder. This is uh, the, the old guy name. with the sash. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, as you know, resting his hand on your shoulder, he says to you, mm, well, son, you've uh, given us at least a little warning. What are you going to do here? Do this isn't your will fight the, or a Westerner. The city, will the city stand? <laughs> I like, yeah. He gives you a, like a nodding look of reassurance. The over city may be lost from time to time, but the the true heart of Milfaldur will never fall to giants. It's impossible. I like look at him a little bit surprised, like to hear him like so ready to. Oh yeah, they they may they might just run over the whole surface city. <laughs> um, I don't really know. I think we probably just stand. I mean, what is he doing? I think we just stand there for a few minutes, like watching these cyclops tear the the wall the mm -hmm. half mile away from us to pieces, right? Yeah, you see, like one cyclops begin to go down on one knee and start to climb back over the other wall when a large boulder flies over and like careens into a building, crushing God knows how many dwarves in it. Um, like it, probably contingents of soldiers are probably rushing from the keep towards the walls, it's, right? And it's civilians a big mess. running the other way, probably mm -hmm. towards the docks. The the older sashed guy faces you and says, "This isn't your fight, Westerner." And uh, is yeah. But if you would like to assist, is yeah. 
Is the cleric nearby, or did she uh, disappear? Uh, oh. She has run up to the front walls already, probably mm-hmm. cursing herself for using two of her healing spells on a relatively fine dwarf. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, she's heading up there. The the older gentleman I... asks you if you would... Uh, <clears throat> why don't you run along? We'll take care of this. I'm sure you Just have other things to deal with. Run along, let us deal with this this guy. Um, does he have like a quest marker over his head? I can't figure out. <laughs> it sounds like he's just like shouting these generic things, like "click on me, ask me what what you can do." You probably don't want anything to do with this. <laughs> um, there is no quest marker over his head. Yeah, I I think I head over to the uh, the cyclops head that we dragged in. There are and, a few people. Using, yeah. Yeah, and using my battle axe, I uh, remove its uh, its lock, oh, its hair. Mm-hmm. So, like I bunch up the hair and thunk, slice it, um, tuck it into my belt, um, gather up my uh, goats from the stables. I, I guess, yeah. So that's where mm-hmm. I head. So I think I so I think I just like leave that officer. Sure. Is he is he standing and continuing to like watch the battle unfold or does, uh, does he No, his squire something? has brought him the rest of his gear that he was waiting for and mm-hmm. is helping strap it onto his body. Um, mm-hmm. and by the time you've packed up your goats and everything's ready to go, you see him and his squire heading yeah. northward, actually westward towards the wall. Yeah. So I gather my goats and I actually follow off after him. Uh, as you Probably are finishing some minute, gathering, some minutes behind. Yeah. yeah, as you finished with the goats, that uh, group of halflings comes up and kind of pokes you from behind to get your attention. Oh, uh, halflings! Mm-hmm. You made it to you made it to Milfaldur, just in time, I see. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, we're not going to stick around. What happened? I guess there's no time. But uh, Cy- Cyclops, and I like point to the wall. Obviously. Yeah, they see it and they look back at you, sort of unconcerned, and say, "Well, are there? All, is it all four of them? All four of them? Mm-hmm. Uh, what will you? You should head to the docks. I say, see if you can get a ship out of the city. It uh, probably won't be easy, but uh, I like reach for my coin purse. They um, they nod in agreement, like, yeah, that that was our plan, uh, but." You're coming with us, right? Coming with, with I'm like. You, you have the mithril. The we we need you. I like look at them for a second. How did they know I have the mithril? <laughs> I've got yeah. And then you like your helmet <laughs> and your. <laughs> <laughs> I nod sternly and tug the goats in the opposite direction, and I think head to the docks with the halflings. Uh, you get down to the docks and sure as shooting, the ships are being loaded with anyone who can pay. Uh, yeah, are they filling up? Like, are we gonna have trouble getting a ship, or can we just? Or are they mostly turning away people or bar- bartering with people for passage? Uh, no, there, there's not. So, no one. People aren't fleeing the city en masse right now. But anyone really? who was wanting to leave the city already is taking off. Most people don't really have the money to take off, nor would they go, like, where would they go? What would they do? They'd just be poor and broke with nowhere to live in another city with no contacts or means of revenue. Um, So most people are sticking here, but the merchants that live in town, or that don't live in town, the the people that do have other places to go are trying to load up and get the hell out of here. Yeah, is there a dock or something? There is, it's a a nice long dock. So I think we head down to the waterfront, um, and I stop for a moment, like I'm where the where the board, where the dock starts, like on the first wood panel, and I like mm-hmm. bump, 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 bump. My heart's pounding out of my chest. I have like flashbacks to these like rough nights at sea or whatever. <laughs> uh, the halflings okay. have no such fears. They hurry and I on like, down. I walked the... a few steps ahead. Okay, and then I like step onto the dock and follow the halflings and try and find a ship. Uh, wh- where are you going? I shout off after the halflings as I rush to catch up. Uh, they seem to be Push. making a beeline for a specific ship, mm-hmm. um, and you can catch up with them, but they don't really slow down for you that much. Uh, so, they'll yeah, stop. So I'm, like, I'm like thinking, God, of overseas voyage. What do I do? I have to warn, uh, you know, warn my clansmen. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
and then I'm like, probably in the back of my mind, I'm thinking I should get a boat for Kel the Ram, but I mm. think I'm just panicked, right? There's crowds mm. of people on the docks and I'm out of my element. I'm already like dreading the upcoming voyage. And I think I just follow the halflings and see where they're ending up. Like, it seems like they know, like, I don't know where to book a captain, how to get a ship. So I, right. yeah, I'm like having a panic attack in the crowd and the, in the sun and above they, water, and my goats are not helping me get through this crowd. But I, I follow after the halflings and we, uh, see where they go. They take you to a boat uh, managed you... by a halfling uh, ship captain and a whole halfling crew. It's like a little halfling boat, uh, <laughs> and they're jabbering back and forth with the, the the ship captain. And then one of them turns to you and says, "Uh, ha, um." My lord, Blacksteel, you don't happen to have some money on you, do you? We're, we're a little broke. What? What's going? What's going on? Where, where, where are you going? And Weatherlight. I, uh, where, mm-hmm. to, to our people. Well, south of Weatherlight. Weatherlight. The Weatherlight. Doing some math on where Weatherlight is. Like that's the wrong. Weatherlight. Like that's the wrong direction. And um, I've already, I've already, I've already been, already been, been like thinking of like. I'm gonna pay for this. Uh, let's think. I don't have any uh, divination magic, so I can't ask for uh, guidance of any sort. Mm-hmm. I have to make this call on my own. Whoa! Uh, Ryan, can you? Your mic is just pure static. Okay. Hello? Sorry about that, everyone. There we go. Okay. Yeah. That's super weird. Yeah, it was just like a sudden burst of. Did I ever, did I ruin everyone's ears? Possibly. But that's just the cost that you uh you have to pay when you watch Dyson with Death. You thought we were gambling with these uh, PCs lives, and in fact we're. Uh, <laughs> Dicing with your ears. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Um, so I was just contemplating whether to tag along with these halflings to Weatherlight or try and book passage to uh, Keldoran. I, I'm, I look over. I pause for a moment and look up and down the dock and try and get a feel for what it's like. Like, so I was expecting chaos and like having trouble is, getting, a, getting a ship out of here. But it is very busy. There are lots of people moving things around, lots of supply crates, merchants packing up all of their shit and taking off, and plenty of passengers trying to leave the city, but you know, not every civilian is trying to flee the city yet. Mm-hmm. Um, Looking up the docks, do I think I could find a ship to Keldoran? Is that like a... I mean, a, probably. Or am I, or am I just like, dear God, it's there, there's, there's humans everywhere. How will <laughs> yeah. we ever get out of this place? I think both... Neither th- those are not um, mutually exclusive concepts. You could probably find a ship to Kelderam, but it would also be a huge pain in the ass, and, and maybe you wouldn't even find it. I think it. I'm just like, and the halflings are like, uh, "Do we have any money?" And I think uh-huh. I'll just I'll tag along with the halflings. So I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah," and I like fumble for my for my coin purse. Uh, how much is it? I like look to the the. Uh, you the halfling at- they were negotiating with, and I'm like, uh, and three and three goats. <laughs> Five people and three goats. Uh, hey, they're halflings. Four of them. I and you, you five, five. Five people and, and three goats at, uh, for two days. Uh, 16 gold. 16 gold. I can just pay for that. It's most of my money, but... Yeah, and I think I just like fork it over without questioning. He was probably like expect. I don't know if he was expecting me to bargain or if the halflings just trans. I've already done the bargaining and translated for me. He said sixteen gold. Sixteen gold. Mm. Right. Things are in a hurry. 20, there are other people piling up behind 16, you. It's six. Okay, nine gold left. Cool. So we pull, climb aboard this uh, halfling vessel. I get the goat mm-hmm. situated somewhere, probably below deck. Uh huh. Um, and... You find yourself in a a below deck area. There are a couple of humans and this boat is definitely not sized for them. Uh, They can really only lie down in here or crawl around on all fours. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, within 15 minutes, the 
the ship is full and pulls out into the harbor and mm -hmm. begins to sail away. Mm. All right. From, nice. from the, the ship, you can see these swarms of cyclops kind of overrunning the city walls. I mean, the city walls are maybe like 25 feet high, maybe 30 feet high, right? The cyclops mm -hmm. are 20 feet high themselves, so for them to climb over is not too terribly difficult. It's really just one pull-up for them. Uh, and your yeah. little boat heads out into the water. Does that, is everyone piled up on top of Oh, deck, oh yeah. Sort of watching the... Uh, uh, as many people can. You know, some of the humans can't are stuck down below decks, uh, and some other people are too terrified, but the, the top deck is filled with onlookers. Mm -hmm. As you sail away. I guess so, yeah. Whew. Did the halflings uh, say anything to me? Uh, they they are watching Slackjawed for the time mm -hmm. being mm -hmm. at the city. Age of sail? No. I always have trouble finding. I need a search function in Roll Twenty for soundtracks. That's what I need. You mean you didn't need a uh, new uh, ruler icon? To be honest, I, I do like the changes made to the rulers. That's well well done on their part. Uh, but I do need a musical search function. Uh, I guess I can just go with 747 sounds instead of uh, <laughs> boat sounds. Whoosh. Yep. Pew pew. Okay. Uh, you take off. And head out. It is going to be a two day ish journey over <coughs> to Weatherlight. Food and board is provided. And uh, off you go. So, uh, once you're maybe an hour out to sea, Milfaldur is kind of getting small in the distance, and your ability to see what is happening there is deeply diminished. Mm -hmm. uh, the sounds of the war or the battle are, are definitely faded into the distance, and you're left on this ship with mostly halflings and a couple of, you know, under deck humans. Hmm. No dwarves? To the Dwarves no dwarves, are. not a single one. I have, were there many at the dock, or were they? Uh, they were. They mostly flee beneath ground. There were dwarven dock workers, but mm -hmm. not uh, dwarven sailors, really. <sighs> yeah, now that the uh, adrenaline's faded a little, I find myself amongst halflings and wonder uh, if I made the right choice. Yeah. Perhaps I should have. Uh, Held it out in the, in the, in the, you know, the uh, tunnels like a good old dwarf. But uh, you look over at them and see that they are <coughs> sort of fine. Uh, they're all sitting down, the, the four that you're hanging out with, in a little circle, and they're passing around. You know, one guy's got a loaf of bread, one guy's got a, a block of cheese, another's got a whole bundle of carrots, and the last one's got like a, a very large tankard of ale, and they'll just. Each one takes a bite or a sip, and they pass counterclockwise and just uh, move the food around in a circle. <clears throat> they're kind of bright and cheery and don't seem bothered by anything, and they're kind of talking back and forth happily. <clears throat> I sigh and uh, join them, share my rations and mm -hmm. water. Maybe tomorrow I'll be able to memorize a water to wine spell, but. Mm. Yeah. And I think settle in for the journey. Uh, can you memorize? Can you, can you yeah, memorize spells on a boat? Yeah, on a ship, as long as it's not super rough. Yeah, yeah. Unless you've got like you're ex uh, exceptionally susceptible to seasickness or something. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um. All right. So I'll burn a calm animals on the donkeys. They probably need it anyways. Mm hmm The goats? Um, yeah. And when I get a chance, I'll re-memorize a water to wine and a, uh, 
this will be the next day or whatever. Water to wine and weighty chest. Mm -hmm. Just produce. Yeah, the rest are fine. I guess I can't cast augury without that temple. <clears throat> mm. Okay. So I guess we'll just see what the future holds the old fashioned way. Um, and I think we'll settle into this two day journey. Okay. Um, yeah. Smooth sailing or do we? Uh... Yeah, oh, actually... I remember what, I want, what else I wanted to do on the journey. I, I'll uh, set to fastening that giant's hair to my helm as I originally intended. Mm -hmm. So I'll, oh, that's what I was thinking to like purify water. I guess it doesn't matter mechanically, but I'll, I'll go through rituals and prayers and maybe some spells. I'll like collect some seawater and mm -hmm. clean the giant's hair because it's probably filthy and matted and whatever, and sort of clean, clean it and scrub it and bless it and purify it and sort of and attach it to the helm. Like if you remember the helm, my helm had like a crest down the top. Right. Whatever. I can't remember what those Roman style helms were. Right. And the plan was always to set uh, a plume or whatever at the top, in this case of a uh, giant's hair, coarse and uh, and knotted. Mm -hmm. um, does that require some sort of crafting check? No, to put it's together, already or been just, just yeah. Yeah, it was already assembled for that purpose. You were just missing the last element. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sweet deal. And I think we make it to Weatherlight. Uh, at some point, the second day, I will uh, wow, wow the halflings by converting salt water to wine. They look and, uh, amazed at this. Mm -hmm. What? It's it's drinkable now? Yeah, just a low-key miracle. And uh, we, uh, yeah drink away the hours at sea. Right. You find yourself in weather light two days later. Is there any any interesting sights along the way? Um. Well, the Emerald Coast is beautiful this time of year. It's beautiful all times of year, actually. The Emerald Forest itself is a, a very dense cluster of trees. Uh, very small, what is it, like a... like a five or maybe 10 square mile uh, thicket of trees that is, you know, the halflings will tell you that it's rumored to be haunted. Another halfling will tell you that it's not haunted, it's filled with elves and fey folk and they just keep out interlopers. Uh, another person will tell you that it's the trees there are actually, like their leaves are um, crystalline and look like gemstones and that's how it got its name. And that the area is, uh, you know, everything there's a little bit crystallized and dangerous to walk on. It'll like cut through your shoes and bleed your feet. And that's why it's been left alone. So you get these conflicting rumors about the Emerald Coast. Um, but that's that's the only thing of interest. You know, the Blumwood and the Dusky Woods are kind of boring. The Strait is not too interesting. It's just this nice big long pathway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so somewhere on the second day, I think we've run out of booze. Like, not to fret. Uh, <laughs> not to fret. Is there, a god of the, is there a god of the sea in this world or something uh, like that? No. No, there isn't. Hmm. No sea god, but there is a sun god. Mm. Yeah. No sea god, huh? Mm-hmm. Do you like, uh... This, uh... This world is rife for a, uh... Octopus cult or something to take ownership of that. Mm -hmm. In any case, uh, <clears throat> yeah, not, to, not to fret, uh, does Sayor drink? Sayor always provides. <laughs> 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 I, like scoop uh -huh. up a basin of seawater and turn it to wine. And we uh, continue listening to the halfling's tales. So mm -hmm. we pull into Weatherlight. Mm -hmm. um, this is where their little cult is from, right? Abbey Convent? Abbey, right? What Abbey. do they have? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's actually, they're not actually from Weatherlight. They're from south of Weatherlight on the coast. Mm -hmm. uh, from a, a small little village 
somewhere over here. You're not sure okay. exactly where. Uh, but hmm. Weatherlight is I... the, the initial stop to, to get you home, or to get you to a, a spot where you can be. Yeah. When you... I... Oh, yeah, so I, 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 I say to the halflings, um, I, I need to get back to... Uh, to warn my brother of the, uh, to tell him what happened. But uh, Tempos has brought me this far. Perhaps I, I, I must, you know, step just a, just a little bit further. Oh, good. Can I, good. can I visit? Can I, can I visit your, uh, your abbey on the coast? They nod very excitedly. Um, and quickly jabber back and forth in halfling for a few minutes. Do you speak halfling? I can never remember. I don't, no. Yeah. yeah. After a few minutes, one of them turns to you and says, well, what do you think? Uh, I didn't hear a word of it. Oh, right. Uh, okay, let, let me surmise. Um, we'll rest here tonight, take a boat in the morning, down the coast, uh, if we can find one. And then, then you'll see our abbey and, uh, and I, one of us can take you, you know, to the further south. What's what's further south? You'll see. I don't think you'd believe me beforehand. I cock ahead, but shrug. All right, I suppose uh, the tavern's on me tonight. Uh, they excitedly hurry <laughs> off to their favorite tavern in Weatherlight. Uh, it's called the the Pine Stand. Pine Stand. Mm-hmm. Yep. And they have this uh, this pine sap flavored ale that these halflings have just been. They're going on and on about it. It tastes just mm-hmm. like sap, pine sap, but it's got that airy. <laughs> That sounds, smell to it and that bitter taste. Bitter as hell. Why would you? Uh, why would you want that? They look at you like, what? What do you mean? Because it's so good. It's got that that flavor. I mean, you you drink whiskey, mm. right? Aye, clean and sharp. Peaty and gross. It tastes like ash. <laughs> I much rather drink pine sap than drink ash. Well, I'll give it a try. And we, uh, uh, it's not viscous like pine sap, but it definitely has that flavor to it. You can. Is it uh, uh fizzy, carbonated? I, I guess you wouldn't describe, usually describe beer as carbonated, but. Uh, uh, there's a slight carbonation to it, mm-hmm. like you might with a. Frothy? A beer. Yeah. Yeah. Is it hoppy? Does it make me uh, want to bounce in my I don't chair? Know. Give me a grub skill. We'll find out. My grub skill is 14. Oh, the best dwarf. No. <laughs> no just, I think I spit it out. I'm like, what is this bitter piss? Bring me a, bring me a real dwarven ale. Uh, they'll bring Some, you a real dwarven a ale. Prop, a proper ale made with just just uh, just wheat and water. Yeah, they'll bring you some wheat and some water and some hops. Did you, did you add pine cones to this? <laughs> what the the server nods, yes. That's, it's a garnish on the side, you know? You just put a little, the small ones floating at the bottom. Yes. It tastes like a damned forest. No, no. Why, thank you. This won't thank you. do. <laughs> and, uh, uh, all right, what is our uh, tavern tab for that night? Uh, I think it probably comes out to like five gold or something ridiculous. Yeah. I'm gonna go broke hanging out with these halflings. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we can go to the next morning. They're asking about for a, a ship to their abbey, and there appears to be none at all. Uh, and so after maybe three or four hours of chatting, they, they come to you and say, well, Hours? <laughs> how, how do you feel about a walk? Well, much, uh, better, much better than another ship. I, oh, good. I, I we're worried you ask. wouldn't want to walk through the desert. Is it a desert? I look out to the... Is there a, is there a wall on Weatherlight, or is the nope. town just sort of... Unwalled, okay. sprawling town. 
Uh, they nod and tell you about I the look hour. Out to the south. About the hourglass desert. It is um, these big kind of sandy dunes that just stretch for, for where's my ruler? These are like twenty miles across and you know almost a hundred miles long. This big sandy dune section that runs the the coast here of eastern Aradon. Yeah. And uh, is there the, a yeah. Okay. Rumor, Sorry. Uh, not even a rumor, but the, the reason it's called Hourglass is because there is a dragon who lives there who bakes the sand into reflective glassy layers and then rests on it to, to reflect as much heat back onto himself as possible. Uh, but then as he walks, the glass crunches and cracks, giving the whole desert a, a glassy shard sort of, I don't know what you would call it, but glassy shards covering the, the sand dunes or buried S under them. Sounds magnificent. They nod excitedly. Um, mm. But we should stick to the coast so you don't get, so you don't step on any glass and get it stuck in your foot. I, I really must see this dragon glass. In any case, um, I will, is there a temple in Weatherlight? There are many, yes. I'll go pray at the temple. Um, prepare for the journey. I will think I, I will gonna need to create water spell. Uh, can I? Oh, and is there? There's a market. I assume. Can I acquire some lead lead ball? I guess for my weighty chest spell. Absolutely. Or some lead balls. I like head mm -hmm. into, head into the market and purchase some lead. Uh, how much does that cost? Like silver. Silver. Um... Let's see. Lead is five times the price of copper. So how much lead do you want? A pound? Half Not a pound? even. Give me, Not a, give me a, like, a weight. Like a fistful of lead balls. Okay. So, so yeah. A couple of, like, I get a bunch of lead marbles, right? Yeah, like a silver then. That's fine. Okay. And I'll uh, cast weighty chest upon my helm for now, and I may just keep dishing these out over the days. So this, for what, so for the next four days, a the chest, book, package, or any other non-living object. Enchanted no a and is touched by anyone other than the caster, the apparent weight of the object increases. This condition makes it extremely difficult for it to move, yada, yada, yada. Okay. Yeah, so my, no one, my helm is, uh, Stuck to your head. Stuck to my head. That way no halflings can steal your helm when you're not looking. Is that the plan? Yeah, I think I'll, you know. You never know. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I should do that with my armor as well. But I'll do that next. Mm -hmm. I think I should just make all my gear extra heavy. So no one can have anything. Okay. Oh. Um, well then, uh, off you guys go along the coast that day. The halflings will pick up some small amount of food. They've got a few coins on them, enough to get you some rations. Get you all some rations. And it's going to be, it's like a 40 mile journey-ish. And you can go probably a little less than 12 miles a day. Uh, let's call it, it tense. Oh, okay, because it's open desert or whatever. Yeah, and you're probably actually going to be sticking to the coastline as much as possible, so you're not having to trudge through deep sands. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not actually all the way down But it's better than the hills. So I'm used to six yeah. miles a day. So, yeah. so, so it 10 miles be... a day is good. So do they, they have an estimate? Are they like, yeah, it'll be about four, be four days. days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I conjure water for the journey. Maybe we need to like purchase some extra buckets or something that we. Uh... Yeah, yeah. Uh, they've got some level of wine skins on them that they fill with water. But mm -hmm. You can get some extra ones, um, and they don't seem too concerned about it. You've got a, a water to wine spell, and they're confident that they can live on wine for four days. Now I've got to create water spell now, and we're not going to be dehydrating <laughs> these poor halflings in the desert. <laughs> And off you travel. So I, uh, ritualistically, you know, polish my my equipment, my gear, my armor, sharpen my weapons, 
and uh, sequentially cast uh, weighty chest on I think most of my equipment. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So if a giant ever tries to pick me up, good luck. And if I uh, go down in combat and these halflings have to drag me to safety, that will also be uh, uh-huh. <laughs> difficult. No, yeah. we'll see. I keep forgetting about my frisky halberd. We should remember that. I mean, I, I, yeah, I already turned it over to guards, right? <laughs> right. Oh, so yeah. I think they it's just been getting. To... I think it's just been getting dispelled, right? I, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That would have. It probably would have been pretty amusing to see you hand it over to a guard, and the halberd like tries to fly away, like sprouts wings and takes off, and the guard has to like wrestle the halberd into the armory. And the caster can voluntarily volunta- voluntarily negate it. Oh, okay. So I think that so I it's re- yeah, okay. retrospect. I think that's what I've been doing. But the material components are not actually important. It's like frog legs, a feather, and a fish scale. So I think we're ignoring those components. And mm-hmm. I'll just uh, at some point recast my frisky halberd, and we'll try to remember it next time. Uh, so you head out along the desert coast. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, that first day, when you first start getting to the sands, um, you see the, the glassy nature of them. Uh, there is a, a bit of a, a divot um, in some dunes, and the, the sides of the divot are covered in glass, and the bottom is sandy. And you can see the, like the long uh, marking of where a tail would probably was at some point, kind of like a, a big slither through the sand. I think I excitedly run, run over to this. Mm-hmm. Yep. You're telling me a, d- a dragon sat here? Uh, they look from a distance and nod, but don't proceed into the dunes with you. I go and I like scoop up a fistful of glass from the bottom of this uh, long this broken shards, you know, as if it was a, maybe like a plane of glass that all broke laterally. Um, so no, yay long, I- yay thin. I collect the finest shards I can find. It is a, an interesting glass. Back with me. It's a, not quite clear. It has more of a like a, a milky component to it, if you must. Reflective. So like a, yeah. Do I think this would be at all useful or more of a curiosity? Like, could it hold and hold an edge? Would this stay a? Bl- doesn't would really look like a, it. Would it no. function as a blade, or is it no. a, more a curiosity? You've definitely accidentally stepped on some pieces of glass, and they've just broken under your weight. Mm-hmm. So, probably can't hold anything. Um, for now, it's a curiosity. Yeah, but it could be, like, attached to some armor or something as a decoration. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Could line your walls with it to keep kids from climbing over. <laughs> What are we, or we don't call it dragon glass in this world, I assume, right? You could. I mean, it is glass made from dragon, but it is not obsidian. It's not the same dragon mm-hmm. glass that you'd get from, like, Game of Thrones. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, mm. and then, yeah, we continue on our on our way. Uh, do we make it 12 miles that day? Uh, 10. A little bit less than 12, yeah. Oh, did you already, did you already place us? I did not like place it. you, no. I'll let you move yourself, though. Yeah, it sounds like we get somewhere like there. For some reason, we were just outside of weather light. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I guess we uh, make camp. What's the weather like out of weather light? Uh, it is a fair day. Blue skies, as far as the eye can see. Uh, a little bit warm, but there's like a nice breeze blowing through. Very dry. Sand gets everything, uh, in everything, gets all over the place. <clears throat> um, and at the end of the day, the halflings find a, a fairly nice spot as far away from the sand as possible, near a, a steep cliff, maybe 40 feet tall or so, that uh, mm-hmm. ends in sandy beaches and rocky and uh, crashing waves. Uh, we camp on the beach? Uh, on the cliff. 
Yeah, hmm. no way down. All right. Okay. It is a three more day journey. Perfect. You know what? We're at break time. So why don't we take our break here and we'll see what days two, three, and four hold for us on the other side of our break. Sounds good. Bye-bye. Bye.